today i'll be discussing the layout of the waste water engineering what is actually happening once you have used the water which is supplied to the city and what is happening to the water which you are generating that is the waste water which you are generating what is happening to that waste water so i'll be discussing the entire layout of the waste water engineering so what happens is let us consider a city let us consider we have a city and the people of the city are utilizing water and after they utilize the water it produces waste water now what to do with that waste water what we do is we take this waste water to a suitable treatment facility we cannot just directly dispose this waste water into a source because in the waste water the waste water consists of organic matter and organic matter is a prime impurity which is present in the waste water and we are not allowed to dispose this waste water directly so we have to perform some treatment units some treatments so that we can dispose this waste water safely right now what we do is the waste water which is produced has to be treated to a desired level and this desired level of treatment it is decided by the source on which we are disposing the waste water if the disposal of the waste water is in a river so what we do is we take a standard value let us suppose 30 mg per liter of bod so we reduce the bod concentration below 30 mg per liter and then we can safely dispose that in the source so the treatment of the waste water is dependent on the source of the disposal right so what happens is the waste water which is produced from a city the waste water which is produced from a city it is taken to a suitable treatment facility this is your treatment plant it is taken to a treatment plant through sewers it is taken to a treatment plant through sewers in this treatment plant we perform various kinds of treatments there are various treatment units like screenings then we go for grit chamber then there is primary sedimentation tank then we go for biological activity then so there are many kinds of treatments which are done so as to remove the prime impurity which is the organic matter so in treatment we are reducing the organic matter concentration once you have done this what we do is we find a source after this treatment either we can find a source for disposal either we can find a source it can be a river or land or lakes anything it can be something like that or what can we do is after this treatment this treated water it can be reused it can be reused by going on moving on to further treatments we can treat it and we can reuse this particular water right so here we are talking about disposal in this topic we are talking about disposal so i am disposing here in that particular source now what are the various treatments which we have to carry out while treatment of the waste water so let us discuss what are the various treatment units which are present over here in this treatment plant so let us suppose your raw sewage the waste water which you are producing it is known as sewage we have this raw sewage and what happens is this raw sewage enters into this treatment plant when the raw sewage enters into the treatment plant the first treatment unit it is known as screens in raw water engineering also the very first unit is screens screens are used to remove the heavier impurities which are present in your waste water right so all these heavy impurities which are present it will get retained over your screens then once you have removed the heavier impurities what we do is we go for finer impurities the finer impurities are removed in two treatment processes the first one is grit chamber the first one is grit chamber and the next one is primary sedimentation tank primary sedimentation tank now what happens in these two units is these two units are used to remove the finer suspended solids or i will say those impurities which are not retained over the screens they are removed in grit chamber and primary sedimentation tank both these units are used for the removal of suspended solids then why we are providing these two units the reason is in grit chamber in grit chamber we will remove we will remove the inorganic solids we will remove the inorganic solids and in primary sedimentation tank we are removing organic 
solids. In grid chamber, we are removing inorganic solids and in primary sedimentation tank, we are removing organic suspended solids. The reason is, why we are providing two separate units? The reason is, this inorganic solids, it is not dangerous to us because it does not consist of any kind of organic matter. But here in primary sedimentation tanks, the solids which are settling, they are organic in nature. They consist of organic matter. So, to separate these two, handling of inorganic solids is easier than organic solids since it does not consist of any organic matter. That's why we have to provide two units, red chamber and primary sedimentation tank. Right? After this, once your solids are removed, then we go for the main part of your wastewater engineering. The waste main part of your wastewater treatment is biological treatment. It is biological treatment. In biological treatment, what we do is we are removing the entire my oh, sorry we are removing the entire organic matter which is present in the wastewater by the action of microorganisms. So in this particular thing, this is the core heart of your wastewater treatment. Here, we are removing the organic matter by microorganisms. We are bringing the contact of microorganisms and organic matter so that microorganisms either in the presence of oxygen or in the absence of oxygen, they can reduce or decompose the organic matter which is present in the wastewater. So, this particular thing is done by two things, two methods. One is suspended growth system. What you are doing is you are taking microorganisms and you are putting inside a tank. This is known as suspended growth system. The second thing is attached growth system. What is attached growth system? You take a film of biomass, you take a layer of biomass which consists of microorganisms and you attach it over a medium just like filters. We attach a layer of biomass over the filters and wastewater is passed through that layer. When this happens, when this happens, contact between microorganisms and organic matter takes place which leads to the decomposition of the organic matter. So all your organic matter is removed over here, biological treatment. There are various kinds of unit in biological treatment like trickling filters, activated sludge process, emoff tank, septic tank, uh, RVCs, rotatively biological contractors, oxidation ponds. There are various kinds of unit where we can remove the organic matter from the system. Right? Now what happens is, once you have done the decomposition of the organic matter or the oxidation of organic matter, there is a formation of a stable product. There is a formation of a stable product which is known as biomass. And this biomass is in suspension. So what we do is, we remove this biomass from the system. How? What we do is, we provide a unit. We provide a unit after biological treatment which is, which is known as secondary sedimentation tank. Secondary sedimentation tank. In secondary sedimentation tank, what we are doing is the biomass which is formed in the biological treatment, it is removed in the secondary sedimentation tank. And after sedi secondary sedimentation tank, there is a process which is known as digestion. Digestion. In digestion, what we are doing is we are reducing the volume of the sludge which is formed. Now, what is sludge? Sludge will be the settled solids which are settled in secondary sedimentation tank and in the primary sedimentation tank. This is known as sludge. So what we do is, we take sludge from both these two units and we put it inside a digestion, digester. So what digester does is, it reduces the volume of the sludge so that our handling of the sludge is easy. The disposal of the sludge is easy. So what we are doing is, we are reducing the volume of the sludge which is formed here in digestion. Now, digestion can be of again two types. It can be either in the presence of oxygen or in the absence of oxygen. Now what happens is, I am getting two types of sludge. I will get sludge over here, primary sedimentation tank, and I will get sludge over here, secondary sedimentation tank. This particular sludge from primary sedimentation tank, this particular thing, it is known as raw sludge. This is known as raw sludge. And the sludge which is from secondary sedimentation tank, it is known as biological sludge. The difference between these two is, the difference between these two is, your primary sedimentation tank consists of raw sludge. Raw sludge means it consists of organic matter. It consists of organic matter and your biological sludge, it does not consist of organic matter. 
it consists of biomass it consists of biomass so what we do is disposal or the treatment is carried out either in the presence of oxygen or in the absence of oxygen we are not going for aerobic treatment in case of raw sludge we are not going for aerobic treatment in case of raw sludge because you have organic matter over here and when you have organic matter what happens is the multiplication of the microorganisms is very fast and the aerobic process if you go for aerobic treatment over here the multiplication will be very high and the sludge which is formed or the biomass which is formed after the decomposition by aerobic process it will be way high it will be way high so our disposal will be difficult so what we are doing in digesters is we have the ultimate aim of digestion is to reduce the volume but if you go for aerobic treatment in case of raw sludge you are increasing the volume of the sludge so that is why aerobic treatment is not preferred for raw sludge instead we go for anaerobic treatment when we go for anaerobic treatment what happens is maximum amount of solids gets converted to gases so our volume gets reduced right then what happens is after this digestion after this digestion whatever solids which are left they are spread over sludge drying beds sludge drying beds when they are spread over sludge drying beds what happens is the excessive moisture which is present in the sludge it gets removed again the volume reduces so what is left only solids are left so we have a very little volume at the end of this process which can be very easily disposed in any land fillings or any by any disposal methods so after this after this it is the disposal this is the disposal so this is a general view overview of the wastewater engineering and the treatment plant so we discussed screens screens is used for heavy impurities screens is used for heavy impurities these two are used for suspended solids suspended solids in biological treatment what we are doing is we are removing organic matter we are reducing organic matter in secondary sedimentation tank what is happening biomass is removed we are removing the biomass and in digestion in digestion what is happening volume reduction we are reducing the volume and ultimately we are going for disposal so this entire process right from the starting generation of wastewater to the disposal of the wastewater it is done by this particular manner wastewater taken by sewers to the treatment plant then after treatment we are disposing that wastewater into a source or it can be reused by adding some more treatment units and this is the entire layout of your wastewater treatment plant right so this is the layout for the wastewater engineering